Ladies and gentlemen, it is, it is time for us to start the awarding ceremony of Fujitsu's recognition by the International Headache Society, GPAC. We are hosting this event online due to COVID-19 prevention measures. However, I would like to appreciate the fact that there are many stakeholders and media attending this event. We are operating the venue with minimum amount of staffs and we are taking the physical distance. And in order to secure the quality of the audio, the people who will be presenting will be taking off their masks. I will be serving as your MC this afternoon. My name is Azuma, General Manager of Healthcare Business Planning and Management Division. Fujitsu has been recognized as by the first world leader in migraine workplace awareness, education, and employee support programs by GPAC of IHS. We have here with us Dr. David Dodik, who is the president of GPAC of International Headache Society, the former president of International Headache Society and professor of Mayo Clinic. He will be giving us the background for why uh, Fujitsu has been recognized and the overview of recognition. Dr. Dodik, the floor is yours. My name is David Dodik, and I'm the chair of the International Headache Society's Global Patient Advocacy Coalition. It is my great privilege and honor to be here at this remarkable celebration to honor people who are disabled with migraine and chronic headache disorders, and to recognize, honor, and congratulate Fujitsu for their wisdom, their commitment, and their dedication to their employees who are impacted by these conditions. Why are we here today? We are here today because of the over 1 billion people across the globe affected by migraine. Migraine is the most common neurological disorder and the leading cause of years lived with disability in the world, especially among people under the age of 50. Its impact is pervasive. It affects an individual's social, personal, family, and their professional lives. Because many of the most severely impacted are in the workplace, there are countless millions of missed work days in many countries every year around the world. Many more millions <clears throat> where people are at work, but unable to be productive and realize their full potential. This is why we are here today. This is what we as specialists in this field have committed our careers to. And these are the people and employees, the Jitsu, has demonstrated an unprecedented commitment to by launching this workplace initiative. So this is why we are here, but how did we get here today? I wanna to give you a little background on how we got here today. So in 2016, Professor Sakai approached me at that time in my capacity as the president of the International Headache Society to request endorsement and support for a major epidemiological study on headache disorders that he was preparing to launch within Fujitsu. This was a very easy decision for the International Headache Society and together with the World Health Organization and the Japanese Headache Society, a study was launched by Professor Sakai and his colleagues to determine the prevalence of chronic headache disorders within Fujitsu, the burden these diseases place on individual employees and the potential opportunity to reduce that burden and improve the quality of life and the productivity and the professional satisfaction of those who are impacted. Then in 2017, the International Headache Society, which heavily supports education and research, decided to bring together over 40 organizations from around the world, including the leading neurological, headache, and pain societies, the World Health Organization, the World Federation of Neurology, regulatory agencies, patient advocates, and leading 
patient advocacy organizations to a summit in Vancouver, Canada to discuss the future of advocacy for the billions affected by chronic headache disorders. We left that summit in Vancouver with a commitment to bring these organizations together to form a global patient advocacy coalition, GPAC. We published the Vancouver Declaration, which is a blueprint or a roadmap for how we as a patient and medical community must unite to advocate for migraine and other chronic headache disorders. But what we didn't know really at that time was exactly where to start our advocacy efforts. So in 2018, Professor Sakai and I flew to Geneva and met with leadership at the World Health Organization. We came out of that meeting with a clear view on the next step. Since migraine is most prevalent and disabling for those between the ages of 18 to 55, we felt and were guided that the most effective strategy for making an impact on the most individuals was to advocate for employees by partnering with employers. We then met in Dublin, achieved consensus among the coalition, published a second Vancouver declaration. And in 2019, I flew to Tokyo and together with Professor Sakai and his colleagues met with executive leadership and health promotion leadership at Fujitsu headquarters. The fact that we are here today indicates just how productive that meeting was and how committed Fujitsu was in not only allowing an unparalleled look into how common and devastating migraine is among their employees, but also then following through on the results of that study within their company and prioritizing the implementation of an unprecedented workplace initiative. That workplace initiative that was implemented was designed to raise awareness and an understanding of these conditions, to create a supportive workplace environment for those who are affected, and also to educate, empower, and provide resources that enable pe people who are affected to manage their disease. This program was also implemented to facilitate or allow access to specialty care for those who were most significantly impacted and required medical treatment. So I really would like to thank my colleagues from many participating organizations of GPAC. I'd like to thank Professor Bull, the president of the World Federation of Neurology, and Professor Tessarelli, the president of the International Headache Society, for a very productive, fruitful partnership and collaboration. I also, of course, want to thank the patients and the experts who have dedicated countless hours over the years on the GPAC Executive Committee. I also wish to thank the logistical and organizational support of the American Migraine Foundation, and in particular, its executive director, Nim Lalvani, and program manager, Heather Phillips. I wanna thank Dr. Igarashi for her partnership, my friends and colleagues within the Japanese Headache Society, and a special thank you to Professor Sakai. Professor Sakai started this with the original epidemiological study, and then he finished it by providing the spark for this workplace initiative. He worked tirelessly to bring all parties together, implement the program, and provide consultation and care for those who were significantly affected. Finally, I want to express my sincere gratitude and congratulations to Fujitsu on this milestone achievement. They enabled the research that revealed the enormous amount of lost productive time and the heavy financial cost to the company, but importantly, they uncovered the human toll on the almost one in five of their employees who are affected by migraine alone within their company. They then implemented a program to reduce that burden and improve the lives of those affected. 
That model is now one that sh should be emulated by companies around the world because migraine <clears throat> and chronic headache disorders represent a major public health issue for which so much can be done to alleviate the human suffering. Nothing less than a unified effort will drive impact on global scale. I want to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the privilege and omedeto gozaimasu. Thank you very much, Dr. Dodik, for your speech. Now we would like to move on to the presentation of the certificate of recognition. We would like to ask uh, Dr. Sakai, past president of the International Headache Society, uh, to present the certificate. So we would like, like to take photographs. So to the member of the media, if you need photographs, please contact uh, the con contact our person in charge of PR. Thank you. President, uh, uh, Dr. Dodik and Dr. Sakai, the three of you. I would now like to ask Mr. Tokita, CEO of Fujitsu Limited, uh, to express his gratitude on behalf of the company. My name is Tokita, CEO of Fujitsu Limited, and I'm also, I'm also serving as CHO, a Chief Health Officer. I am more than happy uh, to uh, and honored, I'm very honored to be recognized as the leader of a HEDI program. And with regards to the recognition, the members of the uh, healthcare business planning and management division, thanks to the efforts made by them. And thank you very much for taking care of the health of the employees of Fujitsu and their families. I would like to extend my deepest appreciation for their efforts. And of course, for us to be recognized, we did receive a lot of support and advices from International Headache Society, and I would like to thank the members of International Headache Society and also the Japanese Headache Society for their support and cooperation. Fujitsu Limited, uh, from 2019, we have started a Fujitsu Headache program. Up until today, we have conducted online training courses, uh, which was taken by 73,000 participants, and we had had 376 employees and their families take a headache consultations. And with that outcome, we were able to receive the certificate of recognition. As CHO of the company, I am committed uh, to continue uh, to make efforts on working on Fujitsu headache program and also the employees of uh, the company, families of the employees, and also uh, the, the customers and to all the stakeholders of Fujitsu Limited, we would like to implement uh, and communicate the importance 
of health management, and uh, we are more, we will be working hard to provide information related to in the importance of improving health. I would like to sincerely ask for your continued support. With that, I would like to conclude my speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So for this recognition, uh, we have the privilege of having presence of presidents of related societies. They will now give us a few words. First, I would like to ask Professor Grisold, President of the World Federation of Neurology. Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to congratulate first uh, Fujitsu, Dr. Saka and Todik on having this outstanding project presented and done. And I think it's a good template for a worldwide activity of uh, joint forces. I'm speaking here as the president of the World Federation of Neurology, which is a UK charity representing six, six regions of the world and have 123 member societies worldwide. Our aim is to foster quality neurology and access worldwide. In addition to member societies, we have a dense network of associated neurological societies and we are proud to be included with the work of the IHS in GBEC, which has taught us a lot in the past years. Advocacy is an implicit duty of any physician. Actually, it means to speak for someone, and it is always an altruistic task. Advocacy can be made for individual persons, for groups, for issues, but it can also be done for oneself. And usually we discriminate between micro, meso, macro, and self-advocacy. The content of advocacy can be very specific, and the success is not dependent on quantity, but on content, substance, and quality. The WFN is a global society engages in projects and increases the number of neurologists and the availability of neurological services worldwide. In the past year, we have launched the World Brain Day, which focuses on a topic or a disease or a general health issues. With IHS and GPEC, the world, the topic of headache seemed so important that it was chosen as, an, as the topic for a World Brain Day in previous years. And this is one of the products of this uh, excellent and successful World Brain Day. This year, it will be brain health for all as a topic which aligns with many interventions and intentions. The role of advocacy for persons, diseases, and health systems cannot be underrated. For headache, which is one of the most common conditions, globally, the role of advocacy has many aspects. Awareness of headaches, which is particularly important in low and lower middle income countries. The implementation of headache care in everyday life. The individual awareness and the prospect of improvement and a new dimension to incorporate the concept of headache in large companies, which is excellently demonstrated in this project. This project is unique and it rests on several important pillars. The large international company opening to this request, which is a very courageous effort. The courage of the employees to cooperate and despite their vulnerability as an affected person and the large administrative work to access to data. It could be considered a breakthrough and it will be followed by many living in similar economic circumstances. For countries with low income or very low income, the principles apply, but prioritization and calibration to the local structures may be needed. Again, I want to congratulate the participants and hope this approach will be a worldwide stimulus to carry forward advocacy and headache further. Thank you very much for inviting me. I was very honored to speak to you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Grisold, uh, for your speech. Now, I would like to invite the president of the International Headache Society, uh, Dr. Uh, Tassarelli, uh, for a speech, please. Thank you very much. I'm really, really honored to be here with you today, um, talking about headache, talking about migraine. As you heard from Professor Dodik, migraine is a very disabling disease and it is common. It uh, affects, uh, it, it, we have numbers showing that 5% of the general population, they have at least five migraine days per month. And they have this for decades in their life. As my friend and a powerful advocate, Audrey Craven, who is in the audience, and she's also part of GPAC, like to say, migraine is an invisible disease because when it strikes hard, patients are bedridden, and when it resolves, they appear to function normally. And in between these two extremes, there are a lot of patients who just stuff themselves with painkillers to be able to function and to be able to work. And uh, in this condition, they try to live a normal life, a normal day, not knowing whether this will be possible. Aware that it might be hard because uh, they will have to concentrate the double to perform, knowing that uh, striving hard to function and to concentrate will probably worsen their migraine. This is an experience that my patients have told me uh, thousands of, of times and that they had experienced for days, for months, for years. So migraine is a, a really insidious enemy that does not kill the victims, but it takes their life away. Days, months, years of life, of work, of family moments, of family pleasures, it takes away um, career opportunities and it forces patients to take mountains of drugs that bring along side effects. It exposes them to increase the risk of harm. Just think of a patient with migraine taking a pill that is reducing his or her attention and having to drive to work. So in this situation, the workplace can become a place uh, of torture for these patients because they are afraid. And in some cases, they are just sure that they will not be able to deliver. They are afraid that colleagues and uh, superiors will not understand that they are nightmare. They are afraid to lose their jobs. And uh, make no mistakes, migrant people are not scared of working. They are scared of not to be able to work. This is very important. Some of my patients, they have lost their jobs and uh, some of them, they have quit their job because they couldn't keep up uh, with the continued stress. But uh, even after several years, they still miss work as an important part of their life's accomplishment. So in this context, I really have to applaud from the very depth of my heart, the endeavor of Professor Sakai who has been president in the past of the International Headache Society, uh, together with the IHS Global Patient Advocacy Coalition and the wonderful, really wonderful response from Fujitsu. You have put together and realized an amazing initiative which will reflect positively, I'm sure, in many ways on the workers with migraine all over the world, not only in Japan. This will set an example that will be followed by many others company and will greatly benefit a large number of workers migrant. In this sense, Fujitsu really emerges as a, a world leader in migrant workplace awareness, education and support programs. And I'm honored to be here today with you to represent the International Headache Society in the celebration of Fujitsu achievement. Well done. Thank you very much, Professor Tassarelli. Last but not least, Director Miyake will now say a few words on behalf of the Healthcare Business Planning Management Division of Fujitsu. Sure. 
I'm Dr. Miyaki, head of health promotion unit. Today, the Fujitsu Group is honored to accept this recognition from the International Headache Society. This is a fruit of sustained effort over five years by Professor Sakai and Dr. Igarashi with the cooperation of over 70,000 employees. We hope that these results will make a positive contribution to the many people around the world suffering from headaches. We are deeply indebted to Professor Dobik, Professor Tasbari, Professor Grisold, and Professor Sakai for their assistance as well as to our president, Tokita san, for his engagement. Finally, the study of medicine is a study of happiness. I really appreciate from the bottom of my heart our deepest thanks to everyone. Appreciation can make a day even change your life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the speech. That is all for the award presentation ceremony. Thank you all for your presentation. Thank you all for waiting. We would like to start the press briefing. So I am Atabe of Public and Investor Relations Division. I'll be serving as the moderator of this session. Let me explain today's program. First of all, uh, we will have uh, uh, Dr. Humiko Sakai, a past president of the International Headache Society and director of the Saitama International Headache Center, and uh, Dr. Hisaka Igarashi, director of the Japanese Headache Society, headache specialist at Fujitsu Clinic and occupational physician of Fujitsu Limited to explain the background of Fujitsu Initiative. Uh, followed by uh, Mr. Yasuhiro Azuma, General Manager of Healthcare Business Planning and Management Division, to explain Fujitsu initiatives on health management. Finally, we will have a QA session. We plan to end this session at 3, t 3 past 10. Thank you. Now, I would like to hand it over to Dr. Sakai and Dr. Igarashi to start the presentation. Uh, this is Sakai speaking. Allow me to say a few words before I start the presentation. Uh, first of all, thank you all for joining the press conference. Um, those of you who are here today, I believe um, n are quite familiar with how hard uh, it is to have migraines and headache. But if you look around the world or in the society, headache, migraine, chronic headache. Um, it is regarded as a very minor disease. How hard it is and what kind of negative impact the disease has on people is, is um, not understood by the society. Migraine and headache as diseases, the awareness level of these diseases is extremely low. It is almost unknown by the society, which I regret. As you have seen, uh, headache-related countermeasures uh, taken by Fujitsu uh, will be explained in the presentation today. About five years ago, as was mentioned earlier in a speech, Fujitsu uh, did a study uh, to identify how many people are suffering from migraine. And it was identified that uh, a significant number of employees were suffering from headaches and migraine, which had uh, impact on the productivity of the work and uh, had negative impact on the ability to concentrate. And 
The economic loss was quite significant, uh, which was uh, found out uh, through the, the study. And from about two and a half years ago, Fujitsu as a company decided a project uh, on a headache. The company itself uh, to work on countermeasures against headache, I believe, is the very first initiative around the world. And we would like to explain about the project, and uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Igarashi to explain the outcome of this project. And uh, Dr. Dodik, who made the speech uh, in the very beginning of the session, is going to stay with us for the press conference. And actually, uh, Dr. Dodik doesn't really know what kind of outcome uh, we have um, achieved uh, through this project. I, I don't think he knows the details about it. So uh, it would be great if he could provide a comment after listening to the presentation. So first of all, I would like to ask Dr. Igarashi to explain the progress and uh, or the contents of the project and also to share with us the outcome of the project. I am Igarashi, who is the Occupational Physician of Fujitsu Limited. As it was mentioned earlier, in 2018, International Headache Society, WHO, and Japanese Society of Headache and Fujitsu decided to embark on a joint research related to negative effects of chronic headache on workers in the workplace. We have found that there were many uh, who were impacted uh, by headaches, and there was a lower productivity from those individuals. The counter pro countermeasure project at Fujitsu had started. According to the, the data in two, 2018, out of the 2,500 employees, 85% were aware of the head headache, and 84% did not have a history of treatment. There was a, a decrease in the performance, and the economic loss was 100,000 yen per year per employees, and that would be 2.6 billion yen per year. So that would be about 1% of the total salaries provided to, uh, our, to our employees, and it was significantly impacting the business. Fujitsu Headache Project was started as part of the Health and Productivity Management, and together uh, with International Headache Society and Japanese Society for Headache, uh, we created um, e-learning texts as well as other initiatives. The project was conducted from July 2019 to February of 2022. 70,000 employees have taken uh, this program. Uh, there were uh, e-learning programs uh, for better understanding of the headaches, and also there were video seminars on demand. And for those who wanted it, uh, we uh, provided consultation uh, for headaches online. So could you go back one slide, please? The next one. Thank you. The Fujitsu project slide, please. So in the e-learning program of Fujitsu Headache Project, uh, Dr. Sakai and Dr. Dodek had provided us uh, guidance in the creation of this video program. Everyone, including the management, have taken this program. And they learned about tension headache as well as the cluster headache. And those of you who wanted it, the, the employees were referred to specialist doctors. And we worked on to create an environment conducive to better place to work for those with headaches. The proper diagnosis of the headaches were made, and also programs which fit the needs of those with headaches uh, were provided. And we're hoping to expand this program even further going forward. This is the result of e-learning. Approximately 
73,000 have completed the program out of the 80,000 total employees. And 30% have answered that this was very useful, and 60% have answered that it was useful. So more than 90% of the people have answered that they felt this e-learning was useful. And the people who did not have headaches said that they were they were able to understand more about the people with headaches, and this program was very useful in having a better team. And the people uh, who had headaches have said that um, it is very difficult for them to explain about their headaches. So this kind of program uh, was very good. And this slide shows about the change in the mindset through e-learning. More than 70% or 72.5% have answered that their mind was changed. And they were able to recognize that this was a headache was a disorder which significantly affected daily lives. Before the program, 46.8% of the people were aware of that. At, after uh, the program, 70.6% have answered uh, that it significantly affects daily lives. And uh, we have taken a look at the category with headache and, and without the headache. And, the, and after taking the program, the people without the headache have realized, 70% of them realized that uh, it was a very debilitating disease. So the people who have taken the consultation on headaches, so 376 people were referred to specialists for headaches. In terms of the guidance, exercise guidance, like the headache uh, prevention exercises were provided, 58.8%, so and the daily life guidance was given to 49.7%, and also 33.5% were referred uh, to the specialist doctors, so about one-third. Please move on to the next slide. Prior to the consultation, 37.8% had a prior a, a prior consultation with the doctors about the headaches. And uh, out of the people who have come to consultation, 67.3% were recommended uh, for consultation of the specialist. So um, I had been a doctor for the outpatient for headaches at Fujitsu. And uh, we had extracted the data of the employees on the slide. In the one year since January of 2020, because of COVID, not many people had come. And in the past year, 38 came due to the consultation about the headache. And this was actually bigger. So that's the year 21. And in terms of the types of headaches, 95% were the people who had migraines. So migraine is very prevalent, and um, it significantly impacts people's lives. So I have brought two case, cases of who have come to me. Uh, the first case is a male at, in the 30 years old. Since five years old, he had headaches, and there were one or two days which he could not go uh, to school uh, per month. And uh, he was taking loxoprofen, uh, but not all of the headache went away. And he had gone to the doctor in um, high school, and he has taken the MRI in the head, and it was diagnosed that he had tension headache. And in March of 2021, he had come to the consultation because he had so many headache days. He came on April 19th, 2021. In March, he had 16 headache days. And April, he had seven days of headache and hit six, which is the disability rate by the headache in the past month. He scored 70, so a very high score, and he was highly affected. So I decided to prescribe lomerizin, uh, which was a uh, drug developed in Japan, and also sumatriptan. And since starting the preventative drug, his headache had decreased, and 
It became 11 days a one month after consultation and six days after two months, four days after three months. And after half a year, he does not, he almost has no headache. And we, I stopped prescribing Lomeragen to him. And in terms of the MIDAS score, um, he had grade four score. So there was a significant impact to his life. But after the consultation, ha six months later, it was three points. So it had significantly improved. The patient had commented that uh, the headache prevention drug helped him a lot. Next is a female in their 40s. She's a family of an employee, and she had migraine without aura. Since 25 years old, she had uh, the migraine without aura, and sometimes she vomited. And there was no uh, no finding in the, the head MRI in the other clinic. And she came to the consultation due to the advice from her husband. She came to Fujitsu Clinic in November of 2021. She had many headache days, but uh, she was getting the fertility treatment. So I prescribed Compo drug, Naratriptan, as well as Naproxen. After three months, she came to me uh, th last week, and what she has said is that by taking the headache diary, she was able to realize how affected she was by headache. The my a lot of migraine patients, because they are living uh, with headache, and they are not really aware of how affected they are because it's their normal life. But by writing the headache diary, she was able to realize how negatively affected she was. And after uh, taking the uh, prescription compo drug, she was, she was seeing decrease in the number of headache days, and she was able to live with live without thinking about the headaches. And she said that there are many people who don't know this kind of uh, treatment for headaches. And she wanted many more people to know about this treatment. And she thanked Fujitsu, who, who started the, uh, the headache project. And also her husband, who advised her to come to see me. So uh, this is the this is the the result of the questionnaire that we have taken by 184 people who have taken the headache consultation, and people 52 uh, percent have answered that it was very useful, and 45 percent said it was useful. So, so uh, people started learning about the countermeasures that they would be able to take, and it was very helpful to see a specialist doctor. So this is a survey on health and productivity management conducted by METI. And what kind of education are being provided to the employees? And the mental health, cancer, exercising, sleeping are included in the item. And last year, the migraine and headache was added as an item. So in considering the health and productivity management at companies, Countermeasures towards migraine and headache are now being recognized by METI. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sakai and Dr. Igarashi, for your presentation. Now, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Azuma, a general manager of healthcare business planning and management division, to explain about health management of Fujitsu Limited. Over to you, Azuma san. This is Azuma speaking for myself. I would like to uh, talk about um, how the headache project was started as part of uh, health management. So I would like to take a bit of my time, of your time, to explain about the health management of Fujitsu Limited. Next page, please. So uh, Fujitsu has been very much focused on the health management of the employees. And on the 1st of August 2017, uh, we have issued a published uh, Fujitsu Group health statement. And based on the three policy objectives, we are implementing initiatives uh, to Im improve the health of the employees. First is to uh, strengthen the activities to maintain and promote the health of the employees. And we will be uh, supporting the employees uh, to uh, do the health management of each employee. And health management 
is not something uh, that stands on its own. So we need to promote diversity and we need to transform the ways people work. We will uh, link our health management initiative to those and also to realize work-life balance and uh, uh, we will take comprehensive approaches, which is the second policy objective. And thirdly, uh, by providing ICT to enhance health management, uh, we will contribute to improved health and productivity for employees, customers, and the society as a whole. So those are the three pillars of the health management of Fujitsu Group. Next, please. Now, um, health management. Our health management related activities is, uh, of course, there are different uh, indicators that we look at, financial indicators and non-financial indicators. Uh, we look at uh, improvement of productivity, maintenance of productivity, and also uh, we also look at engagement to be improved. And to achieve all of these, uh, health management is one of the elements to achieve those targets. Next, please. Um, this shows the overall picture of the health management related activities and shows the focus themes uh, for fiscal year 2021. The focus themes include uh, countermeasures against lifestyle related diseases, countermeasures against mental health, uh, pre uh, prevention of cancer, and also uh, countermeasures against smoking. These are the things that we have been working on uh, from past. And since we implemented the health management, uh, the two things at the bottom, uh, we are trying to raise health awareness to drive behavioral change and also to make contribution to the society by utilizing health knowledge of Fujitsu. Those two are uh, the things uh, that we are working on for, uh, for uh, health management. Specifically, uh, we are trying to make efforts to drive behavior change uh, by raising the awareness on health. Uh, so those are the four major activities that we are implementing. Every uh, Twice a year, uh, we are holding walking events uh, to encourage employees to walk uh, so that uh, walking becomes a habit uh, for the uh, of the employees. And uh, secondly, uh, challenge uh, to stop smoking. Smoking, uh, the target of uh, uh, smoking cessation activities, of course, targets the smokers, but non-smokers uh, work as a team with the smokers uh, to uh, encourage the smokers to stop smoking. And also nutrition-related activities. Once a month, uh, we send or uh, distribute mail magazines on diet, and also we are providing uh, food uh, related to the contents of the mail magazine in the uh, office cafeteria. And we're also holding different types of seminars related to cancer prevention, women's health, and also oral health. As, and including COVID-19, we are providing most updated medical or healthcare related information to the employees. Uh, we are holding online seminars uh, to provide information. And today, uh, this afternoon, we had a seminar on women's health. Uh, we focused on uterus cancer, uh, which will be held online. About 800 people have registered to join the seminar. So we have been uh, focusing on certain topics, uh, looking at the trends. And another thing I would like to mention is uh, the uh, health education uh, provided to the whole group. We is decide on one topic for one year and provide e-learning opportunities to all of the employees of the group. In 2019, a cancer education was provided. From 2019, uh, we started the e-learning activity. And this cancer education is within the e countermeasures against cancer in Japan. Uh, Cancer education for adults is regarded as a social challenge. And of course, uh, there's an increasing number of cancer, uh, uh, of, of uh, employees affected by cancer. So we decided to hold a cancer education, and we provided education to 70,000 employees within the group, and uh, which had a, a major impact on the society as well. The education material that was used 
is uh, uh, was made available uh, to partner companies who are taking uh, anti-cancer actions. And from 2020, we started headache education, uh, which was uh, explained to you today. We started the project on headache. And fiscal year 2021, uh, because of different uh, uh, programs that we have implemented, uh, we, it was extended to 2021, and we are planning on having e-learning opportunities for 2022 on uh, backache. So just holding, uh, providing education is not good enough, but by providing information and education to 70,000 employees uh, is communicated to the, to the society so that we can raise the awareness in the society as well. And lastly, about um, health management, not only appealing or uh, approaching the individual employees, we are also approaching the organization itself. Uh, this is called uh, the uh, the results. Uh, we are providing health checkup results as well as insurance claim data, stress check, and also participation of the employees to different health-related activities. So everything is shown on one piece of paper on one sheet so that the head of the organization will be will be able to understand the status of the organization of the team that the that the person is in charge of so that we can work together to identify what is needed to be done for the team so we are approaching the individuals as well as the organization and also uh, individuals are working to improve their health. So this is a, a very comprehensive initiative implemented by Fujitsu Limited. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you very much. We would like to go into the Q&A session. Your questions will be responded by Dr. Sakai and Igarashi, as well as Mr. Azuma as well as a Dr. David Dodek, who is the president of GPAC of International Headache Society, former president of IHS and professor of Mayo Clinic. I would like to explain how you can ask your question. If you are participating through Zoom, please click on the raise hand button on the Zoom. The MC will call your name and unmute you. Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. We will take your questions one by one. In order to take as many questions as possible, we would like to limit the questions to three questions per person. The session will last until 3.10 p.m. Japan Standard Time. Those of you with questions, please click on the raise hand button comment for my presentation. Dr. Dorek, do you have any uh, comments about Dr. Igarashi's presentation? Oh, thank you. Yes, I do, actually. Um, first of all, congratulations. I will say the results are quite remarkable and exceeded expectations. The primary objectives of this workplace countermeasure intervention program was to first raise awareness and an understanding of what migraine is and the burden of this disease. And the fact that you had 91% participation rate, 73,000 of 80,000 employees, that to me is unprecedented. I've never heard of such a participation rate. So um, congratulations on that. And of those who participated, I believe you said 72% had changed their view uh, toward headache. And that's exactly what we would, what we, we would have wanted to see. That lowers the stigma uh, and creates a safer environment for people with migraine. So truly just remarkable. I will also say that the fact that 91% participated demonstrates a confidence and a trust that employees have in their company, that they're able to come forward like that. Because as alluded to earlier, these patients are in a vulnerable position. So that's that's quite remarkable. The, the second thing that we want, that I think a program like this must accomplish is a change in the workplace environment. And as we've just heard, the 
the workplace environment has significantly changed just through the implementation of this program. And third and finally, it's to empower people to seek the care that they need. And I must say that, you know, even during a pandemic, almost 400 patients sought care, including specialist care. And Dr. Igarashi's cases demonstrates how much can be done for these patients and how you can change these people's lives. I'll say one more thing um, that Fujitsu has really created here a public health research and wellness incubator. Just from listening to the description of what they did, not only for headache, but many other serious medical conditions. And so by taking common and adverse health conditions um, and doing rigorous, you know, implementing these robust and very rich programs and doing rigorous analyses to measure outcomes as to how effective they were, um, you are really setting a precedent for improving the health and well-being of a very large um, employee workforce. So congratulations. Um, it's very impressive. And I'm just uh, really astonished at how effective this intervention program has been. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let me explain how you can raise a question. Participants, please push a raise hand button and the moderator will call your name and will unmute you. Please mention your name and the affiliation before you ask your question, please. Now, uh, please push raise hand button if you have any questions, please. Thank you. Suzuki-san, I will unmute you. Please ask your question. Over to you. My name is Suzuki from Asahi Shimbun. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you very much. The migraine improvement program that you have implemented, is it a unique program or project of Fujitsu? Do you have any plans of, of providing the content of the project to other companies? Thank you very much. This is Azma speaking. Allow me to answer to that question. First of all, this program, uh, we conducted a basic study in 2019. And based on the result of, two, uh, of that study, we found out that the impact of the headache was quite significant, and we decided this is something that we need to work on. And Dr. Dodek of International Headache Society came to Japan, and we agreed that we are going to work together as a joint project to develop uh, the project. Uh, International uh, Headache Society, the Japanese Society of Headache, and Fujitsu, uh, the, the three parties work together to develop the program. The program that we have uh, has already has only been implemented in Fujitsu Limited. So with regards to whether we are going to deploy this project to others, uh, we would like to uh, look into going forward. But uh, for today, uh, we just wanted to share with you the contents of the project that we have implemented and the outcome of the result of the project. And by sharing this uh, to as many people as possible in the society, I I'm thinking that we will be able to raise the awareness as well. Thank you. Did that answer your question, Mr. Suzuki? Yes, understood very well. Thank you very much. So uh, please cancel your raise hand button. Thank you very much. Shimai-san, I will unmute you, so please ask your question, please. From NHK, my name is Shimai. I would like to ask Mr. Azuma this question. For Fujitsu, how serious was headache to Fujitsu, what kind of impact was there, negative impact uh, to the, the work at the workplace? Do you have any numerical data that we would be able to see from the study? 
So the first impact to the company was economic loss, so absence from work, or coming to work with a headache, which leads to lower performance than normal. So the lower performance. So those are the economic impacts that we have focused on first. On an annual basis, there was a loss of 2.6 billion yen per year. So it would be a very big impact if we are able to improve that. But as we went on with the initiative, we have found that people with headache have a lot of concerns at work. Their headache is not well understood. So by ha raising awareness of the headache, we thought that we would be able to improve the environment for the people uh, with headaches. So people know uh, that some people are suffering the headache, but a lot of people didn't know how to interact with those people or help those people. So we started out with improvement in the productivity, but uh, we expanded our activities to create a better place to work for the people with headache. Headache is a significant disease, and people may think that headache is not a significant condition, and, and uh, People felt it strange that people went to clinics uh, just for headache, but now uh, through the improvement of awareness uh, through this program, uh, the employees know how debilitating this disease is, and I think that we were able to improve the situation. Thank you very much for your response. So um, I would like to make a supplementary comment. It's as Mr. Azuma has explained, but one important point is that headache can, is not visible. And that is the most difficult part of headache. In the Fujitsu project, we were able to visualize how many people are suffering from the headache. And also we were able to see how much improvement there was uh, there was after the implementation of the program and also what kind of economic losses were suffered by the company uh, through the headaches were found through this study. So from public health perspective, I think that this study had a huge impact. That's my impression, so that's my supplementary comment. There is another comment I would like to add. people who are suffering the headache, they are not really aware of what a hard time they are having. They take uh, OTC drugs and they try, to, they try to do something about it themselves. But through this project, we were able to improve the awareness of the people who are suffering from the headaches as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, my son. I hope uh, they have been able to answer your question. Yes, thank you. Any other questions, please? Please push raise hand button on Zoom if you have questions. Please push raise hand button if you have any questions, please. So it seems as though that there are no further questions. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude uh, today's uh, press briefing. If you have any additional questions, or those of you who may need photos of today's session, please contact our, our Public and Investor Relations Division. The contact information can be found on the invitation. Thank you very much for joining us.